There we go. All right. Welcome everybody to our 2425 info session for the Cottonwood School. This is a really um one of my favorite times of the year because this is when we start welcoming new families into our community. And that's really what we are as a school. We're a giant community of support for each other and um, for you with staff. I do have um, a handful of staff members here. So we're going to introduce ourselves. I am Kara Parkins. I'm parent support advisor. Um, I work with our family liaison team and our community department and um, do a lot of communication with the parents. So I have three students. Um, two of them are currently with Cottonwood. My daughter was with Cottonwood and has since uh, moved on to a site-based program because that's what's worked best for her now. And my two boys are with Cottonwood and they've all been homeschooling since kindergarten. So Amanda, if you want to Take the mic and introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Amanda Bell. I am a family liaison with the Cottonwood School as well as a parent. So as a family liaison, my job is to connect with the families. And I do that through park days, managing the Facebook group, helping with the school communications, um, just making sure that our parents feel connected to the school since we do serve a large area and have a lot of students, as we'll talk about later. So <clears throat> those are my um, duties as a family liaison. Um, my duties as a Cottonwood parent um, are to make sure that my four students are getting the education that they individually need. So um, I'm coordinating schedules for a 14-year-old, an 11-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 5-year-old. So I have a very wide range, and we've been with Cottonwood now for, um, I think, for about three years, and we have been homeschooling for about five years. All right, Alina, you're up. Oh, can you unmike? Yeah, sorry, that's me. Let me let me unmute oh. her. Go there ahead, go. Alina. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Hello everyone. I'm Alina. Uh, I'm one. Uh, I'm one of the family liaisons, and um, I'm covering a fifty corridor area. And um, I am originally from Ukraine, so I'm speaking Ukrainian, Russian fluently. And uh, I'm a. I'm a parent also. I have three girls um, at Cottonwood at this time. They are ninth grader, sixth grader, and first grader. And my son graduated uh, last year from Cottonwood on site program. And uh, also with my team, I uh, I'm organizing events, field trips, park days. Uh, I am uh, in person every Monday at CCC on school site. So you're welcome to join me. We have activities. We can connect. We can chat. We can answer questions and just spend time together. And on Wednesdays, we are um, doing park days, as Amanda said. So, yeah, this is pretty much it. Thank you. Awesome. Alana. Hi, everybody. My name is Alana Morrow, and I am the Elk Grove Family Liaison. Uh, next year for the 24-25 school year, I will have a first grader and a TKer. Um, and Amanda and Alina already said um, all the things that we do as a family liaison. So I'm excited to get to know all of you. All right, Jonas is here. Yeah, I'm uh, one of the two high school counselors. And so uh, we deal with anything high school. If you guys are looking for uh, grad plans, career, college planning, um, taking college courses in high school, we even have a podcast for uh, special kind of things that are going on with the school. So yeah, if you guys need anything, just don't hesitate to reach out to one of the high school counselors. Thank you. All right. And Maria is here as well, rounding out our family liaison team. Maria, if you want to unmute real quick and introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Hi, my name is Maria Balanchik. I am also family liaison. I have 
currently two students at Cottonwood. One is 12th grade and one is 6th grade. I've been homeschooling since 2009, and I already have three grown-up kids that also graduated from homeschool system, so I really enjoy homeschooling. And I am doing park days and speak Russian and Ukrainian as well. Awesome. Thank you, Maria. I'm scanning through really quick because I saw Julie Bills, but I don't want to put her on the spot to speak if she doesn't want to. She's one of our homeschool teachers. Oh, there she is. She unmuted. Hi, good morning. Just popping in to say hello and make sure I've got good information for this year. That's it. Well, Julie, what is your role with the school? Oh, forgive me. Um, I'm what they call an HST, which is one of the homeschool teachers that every student gets assigned. And I uh, love what I get to do when I connect with families every learning period, eight of which we have, and um, get to do uh, kind of state compliance, testing, get work samples, help you out with curriculum, decision-making, maybe even a little vision casting. And I'm supporting you in every way that we can through the day-to-day -day part of this. Awesome. Well, with those introductions, you got a pretty good picture of of uh, a good portion of our departments and staffs, but now we'll go into the nitty gritty and give you even more information. So that said, uh, here's our agenda. We're gonna talk about our school. We're gonna talk about our support and what that looks like for you, the roles and responsibilities of you and our school, um, our various programs, how it works and enrollment details, how you can enroll with our school. With that, um, I wanna point out that if you are a visual learner, you will see that there's a lot of information on all of these slides. We're gonna cover them each briefly so that you're not here with us for too long, but these slides will be available on our website, on our enrollment page. So you can go back and refer to these, especially if you're a visual learner, that'll be helpful for you. If you're an auditory learner, this is gonna be a great presentation because we're gonna tell you a lot of information and give you a pretty good picture of who we are and what we do. And if you are a kinesthetic learner, grab yourself a fidget or a pen to play with so that you can engage fully with this presentation. The reason I say that and point out those different learning styles is because that's what we do. That's what we're about. We are all about supporting different learners with all of their different learning styles and needs because no one person learns the same uh, and no parent is gonna homeschool their child the same way or teach the same way. So our school supports that in that entire mentality. Um, Amanda's gonna pop back in here and she's gonna introduce you to the school and tell you a little bit more. Okay, so we are a tuition-free public charter school. <clears throat> And like Kara said, we offer those tailored educational pathways for your students. And we homeschool for grades TK through 12th. And we also have a an on-site high school, the Cottonwood College Prep Academy as well. And that's in El Dorado Hills. And there's two separate enrollment processes for the site-based high school and the home study pathway. Um, the site-based high school is four days a week on campus and one day a week at home. That's why it says that it's uh, a hybrid high school program, and that is located in El Dorado Hills, and you can contact them through their website for more information on their program. This presentation is specifically focused on our home study program, which is not a site-based program, um, but offers a lot of opportunity for in-person connection and virtual connection. Um, okay. I think I messed that up, Amanda, because you were going to okay. talk about who we serve. It's fine. No. Um, so though we would love to serve everyone, we are limited to the counties that we can serve. So, um, you and your students must have a, an address in one of the following counties, El Dorado, Amador, Alpine, Placer, and Sacramento. Those are the only counties that we can serve as a school. And like I said in the previous slide, we serve TK through 12th. And I did want to give the TK ages for this year. Um, your four-year-old must be turning five between September 2nd, 2024 and June 2nd, 2025 to be able to enroll with our school. 
So just wanted to make sure that um, that you guys knew that information at the beginning, because if you don't meet those requirements, you cannot enroll with our school. That's right. So with that, we touch on our guiding principles and we touch on these throughout the year because these truly are the principles that drive our decision making um, for our staff, for our administrators and our uh, school board also highly values these principles um, and make sure that they are encompassed in all of we all of what we do and the decisions we make. And so, um, touching back on the whole learner, we are all about the unlimited growth for each student, each learner at their at their level where they're at. We meet kids where they're at, and we open doors for them to grow. Um, and support the parents in designing their own child's education to address all of their needs, not just academic, but also social, emotional, um, enrichment, uh, physical health, all of it. So um, we have a holistic approach, like I said, um, addressing all of those areas. Choice, this is big. You as the parent of your student have the choice to put together learning plans, to make decisions about how you want to educate your child um, and what you want to teach them with, of course, with the partnership of your homeschool teacher and the rest of the school. Um, but we respect individual learning styles while meeting those state standards as a California state public school. Diversity Every family that comes to our school is coming for a different reason. We all have our own reason for choosing a home study um, education for our children. And so we really respect and value the different reasons and roads that brought people to our school. Additionally, we have a really diverse community. As you met Maria and Alina, um, we have uh, large populations of diverse communities, and we aim to serve those populations and make sure that they are connected and plugged in um, the way they need to be. And we also host a number of events and field trips that allow us to learn about and experience different cultures and um, people groups and uh, history and geography and all of that. So community. That's the department that all of the liaisons that you met and myself um, participate in. Relationship and connection and facilitating that is really huge to us. And this also encompasses communication um, within the community uh, realm of making sure that we're communicating frequently and transparently and that you feel in the know at all times. Um, and we offer tons of opportunities, which we'll touch on in just a moment. And then that communication piece ties together with the community, as I said, and as liaisons, um, as we mentioned, making sure that we connect with you on a regular basis and that you, the channels of communication are open means that your voice is being heard and your wants and needs are being addressed, um, and that you're hearing what is needed from you as a school um, to meet those school expectations, which we'll step into in just a moment. So Amanda, do you want to grab that first little spot and talk about what it means to be the educator? Yes. So we wanted to show you guys this graphic to kind of give you a visual about how it works when you enroll with Cottonwood. So if you notice, this top section, that's you. You're the homeschool parent or guardian, and you are also the primary teacher and or educator. So what that means is it doesn't mean that you're sitting down with your child from eight to three every day, teaching them their math, their language arts, their science and history. It means, and it can mean that if you want, want it to, but it means you are the facilitator of how your child learns. You get to choose the style, you get to choose um, the way that they get their information, whether that's from you, whether that's from outside support. So we wanna just wanna make that really clear that there are an infinite number of ways to homeschool your child. You are their educator as well as the coordinator. That's very well articulated. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I know for myself, I have journeyed both roads of outsourcing some things and attempting uh, to do it all. And so finding that balance is all part of the journey. You go into it one way and it evolves over time. That is um, the flexibility piece I've learned as a homeschool parent for sure. Uh, and then we've got the credential teacher of record, the HST, which is what Julie is. She introduced herself. She is one of so many uh, HSTs that are partnered with our families. So each family is assigned an HST. Um, we'll go into it with a little more depth, but they are your primary support, your go-to for all of the things. And then these departments underneath fall beneath that primary relationship that you have between the HST and the homeschool parent with our instruction department, which includes our uh, credential teachers. Jonas falls into that category with our high school support and our school counselor, um, our direct instruction programs to be specific. We'll touch on those in a little bit because your credential teacher, again, your HST does not provide direct instruction to your students. That is the parent responsibility. Um, they are just your support system and can offer guidance and support in educating your child. Um, we've got our purchasing department. They handle all the ordering um, and deal with your student instructional budgets. Our special education department deals with um, um, individual ed education plans for our children who join our school, students who join our school with special needs, community. We keep touching on that with all of our events and amazing things we do there. We have a parent and student advisory committee, um, and we uh, have a lending library, and our tech department handles all of our computer devices and our online programs. So this is a quick overview of how the structure of everything goes. So now we're going to go into the nitty gritty of roles and responsibilities. Um, here we go. So we're starting at the very front um, of what the roles and responsibilities are with the parent responsibilities. As a California state public school, we are publicly funded. And while most of the guidelines that are in place for California state public schools are written um, and meant for brick and mortar schools, they still apply to us as a charter school that is designed for independent study. This means we have to adhere to the same regulations and guidelines put in place by the state of California for all of their schools, which includes testing, interaction with your homeschool teachers, collecting and submitting and creating a cumulative file of student work and submitting daily attendance, which, um, has to do with the funding that comes into our school. So first I'll touch on the testing. We are expected as a school to test, have our students test. We've got a couple different, different tests that have to be completed. We have our internal tests that are not reported externally to the state, but are representative in a in a collective uh, percentage of how many students are participating. And this test is really great for internal purposes, for your HST and yourself um, and our support, support programs that are available for intervention and um, support is to look at our internal testing that happens three times a year and see the areas of triumph of where kids are really getting the concepts and recognizing what they're seeing and learning and demonstrating that understanding, and then also areas of things that they haven't seen before and don't recognize um, that can then be areas of focus that uh, you can hone in on uh, if your student is there and ready with that. And again, that HST conversation and relationship can look at those tests and um, and gauge those. And then we've got our state testing that happens annually. Our students are coming up on that uh, soon in April. We're preparing for that. And so that is something that all of our students are expected to participate in uh, every year. And then that is for grades three to eight and 11th graders participate in the state testing. All of our students participated in our internal 
star testing three times a year, state testing is once a year, and then physical fitness testing. We have one of them going on this morning, in fact, um, where regionally we uh, facilitate and host our physical fitness testing for grades five, seven, and nine, and they're out there running and uh, showing off their coordination and physical skills today. So Amanda, do you want to talk a little bit about the monthly meetings and what that looks like? Yes. So um, as um, <clears throat> a Cottonwood family, you are expected to meet with your HST about once every 20 school days. Um, you, you'll schedule those meetings with your HST throughout the year. We are making sure that our parents, our, our families are meeting with their HSTs at least two times in person per semester for the 24-25 school year. And um, the rest can be up to you, to what works for you and your HST. So you guys will work together to find the most ideal schedule that's falling within the, that 20 day, 20 days, 20 school day period. So um, when we meet with our HST, we love to do in-person meetings. We haven't done a virtual meeting with our HST this year, but it's because we love to pair it with a visit to the school site, the lending library that we'll talk about later, maybe an event that's going on. Um, we're doing that next week. We're going to meet with our HST before an event up at the school site. And um, they're just really great ways to check in with someone who is connected with the school you, your kids can bring a body of their work that they've been working on for the last 20 school days to show to their HST. Um, they get to show off and brag and, and have conversations. And my HST always makes sure to, to throw in a little lesson. I, I kind of try to stay out of it and let them have the time together, my kids in the HST. But, and I noticed that she'll she'll kind of check in and, and have a little fun tidbit for them to do. So um, these are just really great ways to connect with your HST and your HST to connect with you and um, and the school. And those HSTs and families, I can speak from personal experience, build beautiful relationships and are extremely invested in developing relationships with you as a homeschool parent and making sure that you feel supported, but also meaningful relationships with each of your children. Um, and are really invested in getting to know them and getting to know their interests and what their needs are specifically. And even better, you can stay with the same HST through the course of your education with Cottonwood. Um, there are families that have been with the same HST year after year, and they've seen them grow and know them really and know how they've grown and can celebrate them along alongside you and also speak to some of their needs, um, which is really fun. And now those work samples Amanda touched on, you're going to uh, bring a body of work to show your teacher of here's what we're doing cumulatively that can look different for every grade and every student, depending upon the work that you're implementing um, and the learning approach that you're using. So some of it can be verbal sometimes and pictures of field trips and things like that. And then also written work um, that gets submitted to that cumulative file that the teacher is keeping on record for you. And then attendance. Attendance is an easy peasy process for us at our school. You're logging on to an online system with check boxes every single day saying my student participated in school today and that is how you claim attendance, but that is required to be done every school day to make sure that those records are up to date that we are uh, submitting and are held accountable for to show that your student is attending school. And up next, the HST partnership. Okay, so we've already touched on most of this. Each home, home study student has a designated HST. The entire family, if you have one student, you have an HST. If you have five students, all five of your students will have the same HST. So you have an HST designated for your family that works with each student and parent independently. Uh, they offer support and guidance and accountability. Uh, they assist in selecting the curriculum that you plan to use, developing education plans, and then they manage your paperwork. So you're submitting this work to them and they're handling the back end of getting all of that paperwork where it needs to be. 
And again, you're meeting with them once every 20 school days. They oversee your purchasing. So you submit orders, they approve them. Um, and they also manage the student testing process in partnership with you, the parents. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the educational budget um, mm -hmm. and how all of that works. So take it away, Amanda. All right, so um, for the 24-25 school year, if you were to enroll with our school, you would have access to an instructional funds budget for each of your students enrolled with our school. And you can see the amounts right there. Your TKers are getting 2,400, K through eight, 28, and nine through 12 get a little bump at 3,200. So um, how that works is when you want to use a portion of that budget, you're going to submit orders to your HST through our ordering system. So the HST is going, whether it's products, um, services, things from our catalog, or your HST is then going to see that that has been um, submitted and then they're going to take a look at it, make sure it aligns with all the school standards and approve your order. And then the order will go will be placed by our fantastic purchase purchasing department. Um, and the, the learning budget can be used for so many different things. I can't even, um, I can't even cover a fraction of it, but the main um, categories would be curriculum. You can purchase curriculum. You can purchase technology. You can purchase um, services with our community partners. So that's kind of going back to that, how you are the educator slash coordinator if you wanted to hire a tutor for math, if you're just like, I can't really teach my kid math, then you could um, submit that order with one of our community partners with a student learning budget and um, get that approved by your HST so you could utilize that. Community partners, we'll go over later. So I'll leave it at that for now, but you can also um, purchase educational enrichment activities all over the area field trips. Um, we're going, I'm going today to the theater with my daughter. You can go to the zoo, you can get museum passes, just a ton of options. And, and it's totally um, flexible for what you want to use it for. Okay, so technology, we are super committed to getting computers in the hands of all of our students who need them. And so what that looks like is we have a, a tech usage fee of $200 a year to get that device in your hand. The benefit of having devices through our school is that they are preloaded with Microsoft Office, your Clever Dashboard, which Amanda is gonna chat about below, uh, Pear Deck 24, so you've got 24 seven tutoring available for seventh to 12th grade students. You have access to Adobe Creative Suite. And also it's a platform that is secure and monitored for students. So you have that peace of mind of knowing that you've got a secure and safe device for your, uh, for your students. And it's already set up for all of our assessments. You will pay a annual fee of 200, but that device also has that tech support where if something's wrong with it, you've got a tech team who's gonna take care of that and fix it, fix all of your problems for you. Amanda, can you talk about our free online programs? Yes, I love talking about this topic um, because we utilize pretty much everything that you can um, with the school, these free programs that are just so great. So first of all, you start with a clever dashboard that will house all the things that are available to you as a Cottonwood family or Cottonwood student. And um, it's really nice because you can just click on the icons that you need for that day. So right now I have um, my son who's learning how to type. He's utilizing the free typing system. It's also a spelling program. So he does that every day. Um, we use Generation Genius, which is another free program with amazing videos that um, address science topics and math topics and then give you a full lesson plan after that to um, utilize with your homeschooling. Um, okay, so I could talk about each of these individually, but I won't because it'll take too long, but it's just a really great thing. You'll know this before the first day of school, what you'll have access to. 
And you'll be able to work that into your plan through the year with no cost to you whatsoever. And your HST will work with you. You don't have to subscribe to everything, but you will you will have access to everything if you want. So it's just a really exciting thing that you you get to use and it's not cutting into that student learning budget that we talked yeah, about. Yeah, I was just going to say that, that I have found that I've saved a, quite a bit of funding um, uh, from that instructional budget and have utilized these programs that have uh, filled some gaps with curriculum. And then I've got those leftover funds for enrichment and additional supplies and materials for our education. This $200, I wanted to note for the annual tech usage fee, uh, I want to mention that anytime we're mentioning these dollar amounts, they are not coming out of pocket. They are um, withdrawn from your student educational budget. So I wanted to clarify that for you. Um, community partners. Okay. Um, again, this is one that we could go on and on and on about forever, but Amanda, I'll do a brief little commentary on this. Yes. Brief. I, cause I could talk about it all day and I have, I did touch on it a couple slides ago, but, um, we have a full catalog of community partners. I'm not sure of the exact number at the time, but I know there's hundreds and hundreds of them offering everything that you see on the right hand side and more. I've got theater, piano, um, dance for my kids. And I mean, the possibilities are in endless. I know I have my eye on a gardening class that we offer or that one of our community partners offers, I'm sorry. And um, the nice thing about this is you can go look at that catalog now, if you wanted, if you want, go to our website and, and live linked here, you can click oh, right yes. through this slide deck to get to that community partner catalog. Yeah, so it's live, yeah, live link there. You can also find it on our website under vendors and um, community partners. And I would open it in its own browser tab because it's very searchable and you can just see what's available in your area or what's available in your area of interest to you and to your students. And I will say my kids have had the opportunity with community partners to explore things that we may have not explored otherwise. So it really has opened the door to interests and passions that we may have not otherwise discovered, uh, which is a really, really fun part of homeschooling and independent study is just utilizing these community partners to explore all sorts of things. The other thing that um, our community partners include is those tutors and those outsourcing possibilities of um, allowing your kids to take math classes and language arts classes that um, that offer you the opportunity to have someone external teaching your kids a certain subject area or topic. And I did want to mention too, because I didn't touch on this, but um, like homeschooling co-ops would be on the list where you can send your child to school for the full day and they're taking classes with at a location with a full class of kids and a teacher. So that's yeah. definitely something you can work into your educational plan if you just want to make sure you have a day or a half day or two half days of where they're out of the house and they're, they're with classmates and, and doing these kinds of fun things. They have academics or they have elective enrichment classes like that. So you'll definitely find a lot of options like that in our community partner catalog. Yep. And then we have, now we talked about the external offerings and we're going to dive into our internal programs that are uh, exceptional. And Amanda and I both, as well as our other family liaisons have participated in these various programs. So um, Amanda is going to talk to these, uh, speak to these virtual via Zoom instructional programs that are all our internal Cottonwood exclusive programs. And I'm just going to touch on them um, briefly. You can find more information on these programs on our website. And then if you were to enroll with our school, you would also, you could get a lot of information from your HST, but we just want to make sure that you know these things are being offered. Um, so Superstar Readers is a free reading program that was created and is now taught by um, a Cottonwood employee. And I have a Superstar Reader kindergartner and um, it's a really flexible class. It 
just gives the parent the support they need to get their kids reading. And it's so fun. And like I said, flexible. And it's so you're not on your own if you want to homeschool your kindergartner, but are afraid to teach. You're like, I don't know how to teach a child how to read. Well, you will once you you enter this program. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> it's based on the science of reading. The yeah. agency that's developed it um, <clears throat> had a daughter of her own who was dyslexic. And so she's really um got the she has the skill set and the knowledge to to build out she's built out this exceptional program that we've had nothing but positive feedback about so you can go to our website and there's sample videos of this program that you can check out but it's um it's exceptional and it's free yep it comes with the video it comes with printables it comes with a free a learning app um a free learning app so or free reading app so it's just really great Yep. Um, okay, and then we have boost for um, we that covers math and language arts. That is a TK through sixth grade program. Um, unlike Superstar Readers, which is a full reading curriculum, Boost is not a full curriculum, but rather an enrichment class, one time a week. Um, they're about an hour of the classes, and the it's just so cool. I wish I could be in Boost um, at the beginning of the year your teacher, your boost teacher will send you a boost box and the box will be full of items that you will use in your virtual boost class all year round. So for math, my son got a bunch of um, kind of like arts and crafts products because they're doing a lot of drawing and, and fun math things. And then for language arts, his boost box came with two novels and then a bunch of other things that they'll use during their class time together. So it's really cool because it it's independent. The kid can, the teacher can say, okay, get, get your boost box out. Today we're going to do this and they'll have everything they need right there. They get to see the kids um, on the screen. They get to interact with their teacher. And what I love is when we go on Cottonwood field trips and Cottonwood park days, my kids see their boost classmates in person and they say, I know you from boost. So it is virtual, but it's a really cool way to, to bridge the gap for the in-person connections. And then um, RISE, we all, I, my family also um, participates in RISE that we offer right now, math, language, arts, science, and study skills for RISE students. And that is a full <clears throat> curriculum program. So my daughter takes RISE language arts and she has two classes a week and assignments every day. And um, it's just a really fantastic program. And she she gets grades that I can look through, her HST can look through, we can support her where she needs, but for the most part, she's working really independently and within her class. So she has a group that she talks with every, every class and she has her teacher that is available Monday through Friday. So um, it's just a really great thing for her. And they do exclusive rise field trips throughout. Field trips. Yes. Yeah. She went to Crocker well. Art Museum with her classmates last semester. And then the science rise kids are going to the Smud, Smud Mozak um, Museum in March to do a full workshop together. Yeah, it's super fun. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter quickly developed relationships in her junior high rise program, and they had some. Um, Google chats outside of class where they were connecting socially and they really do develop friendships through that. And then similarly, we've got our CVHS, um, which is our Cottonwood Virtual High School. Again, this is all encompassing. So they are going to classes two, two times uh, weekly via Zoom. And they this includes for Junior High Rise and CVHS, you're getting um, all of your textbooks, whether it's printed materials or online is included in the price of this program um, in addition to the device that's needed. So you're getting a Chromebook with these classes um, incorporated into that class fee. And so CVHS, it offers a full range of classes. So you've got all of the classes that you would need to transfer into um into college. So they're all A to G courses and there's a full schedule online. It's live linked uh, through 
through here. And so you have everything you need there. And then we've got our CTE program and I can, um, again, on our website, you can see all of the offerings for our CTE programs, which incorporates core academic knowledge and technical and occupational knowledge. So we have tons of fields of study um, available for our CTE students that um, so like culin culinary and agriculture and business and marketing and things of that nature that you can dive deeper into if that's something that your student is interested in. And then this secondary slide is going to be available in the slide deck. If any of those programs sound interesting to you, you can dive deeper into the costs and what's included in these classes with that cost um, that come out of your educational funds. But you can see that if you're taking a full range of like full at all the high school classes that you need for the school year is $1,800 a year out of that educational funding budget. Um, and then your student for $1,800 a year has their entire selection of high school courses um, for meeting those graduation requirements. So that's pretty <laughs> phenomenal. Um, and then all of those junior high classes we talked about is $1,200 a year, including all of the same things of direct instruction, all of the curriculum and meeting those um, requirements that they need to transfer into high school. So pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And then new this year, this is new to us. So we're super enthusiastic and excited about this because it's brand new to us this semester and uh, will be offered with expanded offerings next year. We have brand new uh, Cottonwood Visual Arts, World Languages, and Music with teachers that are offering courses to as electives to our elementary and junior high students. So um, no prior experience is going to be needed. This is Spiral Curriculum. Again, this is a virtual program, um, but we're really, really excited about it. Our current students are just getting ready to embark on their first cycle of classes with these teachers, and it's um, going to be phenomenal. So having these electives available to our elementary and junior high students is really exciting and cool. Uh, and moving forward, we um, offer TK Explorers. So Amanda, take it away with this one. Okay, great. Um, we love our TK students. They are amazing. And so we make sure that they are welcomed into Cottonwood in a really special way. Um, <clears throat> our TK Explorers have access to um, really um, special exclusive TK events that I've helped plan. So we have a science one coming up. We had a literacy one back in the fall. So those are just really great ways to connect with, have your TKers be in that environment with other kids their age, but also for you to go and meet other TK parents. Um, we have TK teachers who will help you pick a good curriculum for your four turning five-year-old. And uh, there is a really cute and fun um circle time they do via via zoom every week so we just want to make sure that our that our tk students are getting what they need to be set up for success for all their future years at cottonwood yep um it's this has been a beautiful program and offering in these sweet little TKers have been making some amazing connections this year. Again, oh yeah and you'll see the dates again yeah so yep. just pay attention to those if you have a four-year-old that you're meeting those requirements um, to enroll. Yep. And okay, so community, drum mm -hmm. roll please, <laughs> field trips. We have had uh, over 250 field trips this year. It's crazy. Um, we, uh, it, it's crazy that I always stumble across that number be, um, or because it's just so phenomenal. We do so many field trips every single month. We have some in the Bay Area. We're getting ready for a sleepover at the um, Academy of Sciences, which is super exciting. We um, do outdoor, we do indoor, we do all kinds of uh, field trips. And then we have a number of events throughout the school year mm -hmm. as well. Um, gatherings, Alina talk, spoke, um, talked to this. We meet at four regions of park days. So we have four park days every single week. And on Monday, we meet live and in person with um, all of that. 
Amanda, can you speak to the teen trips really quick? Yes, we have exclusive teen opportunities, which makes a huge difference. These opportunities are also most of the time um, have the option of being dropped off. So as your as your students are getting older, they're they're having a little more independence on um, on their social time and they get to be with teens rather than being with their families. And I have a teen who attends a lot of these events and they're just such a super great way for them to connect and feel like they're part of a community. And um, they get to see if they are taking some of those in-house programs with Cottonwood, they get to see them there and um, and see each other at recurring events. So it's just really great for teens when they're really needing and wanting that social connection. And then... <clears throat> And we're we're kind of we're we're talking through some brainstorming to strengthen our teen and middle school departments uh, field trip uh, events even more for next year. We really just want to make sure we're getting those students what they need for their social socialization. And then um, we talked about field trips and gatherings, but we also have big school wide events that we love. Um, a lot of them, most of them are project-based learning where students are preparing um, over a good period of time, either a presentation or something to share with other families. So this year alone, we've had the Spelling Bee, we've had the Maker's Market in November, and we have another Maker's Market coming where the students make their goods and then sell them to the people visiting. Um, we have the Science Fair coming up, International Festival, um, just a bunch of really big events that we love pouring a lot of time and energy into. So it just makes our school year really fun. And you can participate in one. You can participate in them all. It's just really what what you want to do. Amazing. And if you could touch on the Lending Library really quick, too, that would be amazing. Yes, I would love to talk about the Lending Library. I talked about this is where we meet our HST every um, every 20 days-ish. We love the Lending Library. The librarians there are welcoming. They are helpful. They they take a they take a special interest in getting to know the families. So when they see you again, they're like, "Oh, hey, someone turned this in. You might want it. I know your kids like this kind of thing." But it's stuffed full of everything you could need and a lot of things that you you want. Um, so children's books, novels, games, puzzles, full curriculum, a huge free shelf where you can grab whatever you want, whatever looks good, um, musical instruments, uh, educational toys. My boys just came home with a little, a little toy that, um, you build a structure on it and then you turn it on and it shakes like there's an earthquake and it has different levels. And so level one is a small one and then it goes up to five and they try they're trying to build all these structures that will that will make it through the highest level so it's just really cool um it will save those that fun for you if you are checking things out like the curriculum you don't have to purchase the curriculum you can check it out from there and they also offer story time and other activities and it's just a really great place and i love it <laughs> and there's there's an example of it. You'll have a little kid section. You'll have some meeting areas. You'll you'll have the section with the toys and puzzles. And it's really well organized. And like I said, if you're having trouble, the librarians are all so knowledgeable and so helpful. And they'll they'll get you what you need. Yeah, our looking library to scan through curriculum is really phenomenal. Um, HSTs often meet their families there too to walk through that looking library section and make some choices. So, okay, Amanda's going to keep going because she also participates a lot in our Mindset Mondays and with our self program, which is just a beautiful program that I love. But Amanda has a lot to say about it too. So we um, we say it's our self program, but it stands for the Social Emotional Learning Foundations program that we have at our school. Um, at our school, we have a self coordinator who is also an HST and they they facilitate these things that you see listed here. Every week you will get um, the self-talk newsletter into your inbox. 
from our self coordinator and it has um, resource resources related to social, social emotional learning for your students, free resources, um, recommended things happening in the area, recommended podcasts, just a whole bunch of stuff that you can work into your, your child's education if you want. Um, they also put on um, events SEL events. And then every Monday we have a virtual class called Mindset Mondays. And it's super fantastic. It's divided by ages. So you'll have the youngers, the middles and the olders. And the self-talk or the self-coordinator will um, do a little presentation with the kids about the theme that week. You can get 100% um, accountable would be one of the themes. And they give the kids challenges and activities to work on to um, strengthen their social emotional learning. Which ties right into our Everybody Belongs program, <clears throat> which is um, also really special and near and dear to my heart. We have our international festival coming up um, where kids come and present about either their own culture and country and traditions or um, that of one that they're studying and geography around the world. And so it's really exciting, but that is not all. We have a whole team um, within Everybody Belongs that create events throughout the school year that educate us on different traditions and cultures. And um, we have really cool events um, that they do. So that is a program that we're really proud of and that we uh, work to make sure that we are including everybody and learning about other cultures and each other all of the time. Special education. We have a full special education department. Um, you'll work with your HSC and the special education department to um, establish services with them if those are needed. If you currently have an IEP that will transfer over with your student. And if you are in need of special education services, again, you'll work with your student and our special education department to establish those if your um, student qualifies for those. But we are fully equipped to serve all special education students at the Cottonwood School. And Alina, are you still with us? Baby loser. She's here. Okay. Alina is going to give us a little, um, a little bit about our EL program. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Amanda, for <laughs> turning my mic on. So our school has a ELD program. Uh, ELD, EL stands for English Language Development, and it's a program for English learners. So this program is for you if uh, English is not your first language and you mostly speak your native language at home. And that means both parents and kids. Um, we have that program that the whole department who coordinates this program. So they will offer you all steps. They will go you through this process. And also you have, you'll have your HST. Uh, your homeschool teacher who will oversee this process. So they help you with scheduling, with um, scheduling classes, scheduling tests. Uh, they will make sure that your child will take a test, special test to be reclassified to English proficient. And um, when you apply and you fill out the registration application, if you mark that your child speaks another language at home, your child will be automatically put on this program. Amazing. Thank you so much for speaking to that. Okay. And now we're going to talk about enrollment. Okay. So this is really important. Our open enrollment dates are March 1st through 14th. So you've already got to jump on it because you are at our first an info session or watching this info session uh, recorded, you must apply between the 1st and 14th to be put into our open enrollment grouping. If we uh, have more applicants than there is space available, we will go to a lottery. 
Um, you And then after that, after the lottery on March 22nd, all registration emails are sent to the families that are getting a space to apply for our school. So there's additional steps. Your open enrollment application does not mean that you are enrolled. It means that you've submitted interest to enroll in our school. So you will be then sent a registration email and I'm gonna go ahead and go to our enrollment page so you can see this. Um, we've got three, we've got these different pathways, right? So we talked about our Cottonwood High School home study versus our college prep academy, which is our site-based program, our info sessions, uh, enrollment office hours. So you can attend these office hours um, once you receive the registration information and you can find more information down here. So as I said, you've got the application that you're gonna submit during that open enrollment window. Then you'll get an enrollment offer, which is your spot confirmation saying, yes, I wanna spot at your school. You have three days to respond to that uh, email to claim your spot. Um, at that point, if you miss that three-day window, you go back on the waiting list. So make sure that you're paying attention to your email and submitting that in a timely fashion. And then at that point, once you've con uh, confirmed that you want that spot, you'll get the link for your to complete your registration through Reg Online. And this is where you'll submit all of your documents. You have a seven-day window to complete that registration. All of the required documents are listed on the website as well and frequently asked questions about the counties we serve and all of that as we addressed in the uh, presentation. So there you have it. That is our info session for the 24-25 school year. We have a form that Amanda is going to throw into the chat or has already that you can uh, click on to submit your uh, questions that you would like addressed after this meeting when we will be in touch with you. So thank you for coming and we hope you enjoyed our presentation. Please fill out that form if you have any questions. Yep. Grab that chat link or that um, form link in the chat if you have a question that we didn't address and that will go directly to us and we will get back to you. We're also going to put that form link on the website if it's inconvenient for you to grab it at this time, along with this recording. And we can unmute Julie. She's OK. OK, Miss Julie. OK, and if you don't have time for this, it's good. I just want to encourage you parents that um, it's really easy after something like this to have glazed over eyes or panic or you know, it can seem overwhelming with all the choices and what's there. But I just want to encourage you that um, don't let that um, do take away the joy of what you're considering right now. Um, there are so many educational choices out there and they all have pros and cons and they're all going to take uh, certain kinds of support or sacrifice. And you can't really... Um, you can't really go wrong if you're really just watching your kids and you're thinking about it and you're saying what's best for our family. And I just want to encourage you to relax with that once you make that decision. Um, your kids are made to learn and they're going to learn wherever we put them, you know, whether that's about uh, relationships or curriculum or skills. And so you're trying to find out why do we do what we do and what do we want to do with that? And you know, take that, make those decisions, and then just relax with it. Enjoy the ride. Um, there's going to be challenges no matter where you go on this, but um, it's really fun. So uh, feel free to ask a lot of questions. I think that's part of your investigative journey. Don't feel like you have to make decisions immediately, but do your work so that when you're ready to make a decision, you're ready to pull the trigger. And then just have that confidence that once you do that, your kids can have confidence too, because you're doing what's best for them, what's best for your family, and then just enjoy the ride. That's what I wanted to add. I love it, Julie. I'm so glad you added that. So thank you. And thank you for joining and attending. And um, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Take care.